Hello everyone, we hope you're all doing beautifully well. Today we're going to be looking at the relatively new Aegis Destroyer that we have in DCS World. We're going to have a look at its real life credentials and then we're going to have a look at it in DCS World. So here's our master sheet that you're welcome to come and peruse if you want. So it's a destroyer and it is DGG1. 12. Uh, what's the name of this class? That would be the Arlie Burke Flight 2A. Arlie Burke, Roger. Is the one we've got the Michael Murphy, or have we got the... Yeah, the Michael Murphy is like a... It's like a sub... It's the last of the subclass of Flight 2A. There's a couple different variants of this. Yep, it's the... Uh, this is the one we have in DCS. Well, I was unaware. Okay, Arlie Burke, class Flight 2A, Guided Missile Destroyer, DDG aka Oscar Aust Austin subclass. Uh, class details. The Arlie Boat Destroyer class and its subclasses are a class of multi-role ships capable of covering many mission types such as strike, air defense, shore bombardment, and surface warfare other than the traditional role of the sub hunter. Much of its multi-role capability comes with its Mark 41 vertical launch system which can accommodate many missile types. Plus it's an Aegis system using its SPY-1D to scan the skies for enemy planes and missiles in cluttered coastal waters. Its roles have been expanded to cover ballistic missile defense, BMD and also anti-satellite. However the latter isn't an intended use for this class. This class is noticed to be, noted to be a very large for a destroyer with the Spruance Kid Ticonderoga uh, guided missile cruisers all three share the same hull. Mm, I was unaware, unaware. So it shares a cruiser's hull. Yeah it's like the uh, Ticonderoga was supposed to be a DDG but then there is a thing called the uh, uh, it was basically a cruiser crisis thing where the media noticed that the Soviets were declaring more ships as cruisers and we didn't. Oh no, it's a problem. Very good. And Zumwalt's DDG became larger. This class has several notable aspects about its construction. First off, it represents a return to an all steel construction because there was aluminum before this, wasn't there? A change from early ship construction which used aluminum for their superstructures. This allowed for a higher superstructure for improved stability. However, it would be vulnerable to cracking and has less fire resistance than steel. Right. Because I remember the reading a book about the uh, Oliver has a Perry and the 20 mic mic from uh, just small vessels was just punching through the aluminum. Uh, also, this class was built with stealth characteristics in mind, with faceted construction radar absorbing materials being used in its construction. The original series, called Flight 1, has been noticed to have the radar cross-section of a small fishing vessel. How interesting. Later flights would uh, further reduce the uh, radar cross-section values. This class is split into several main builds, known as flights. Flight 1 is the original series. Flight 2 saw the addition of combat direction finding JTIDs, Tadix B and SLQ-32V3. Flight 2A would see an addition of a flight hangar, adding six via vertical launch system cells by removing the cranes and the cranes meant for underway reloading. The addition of a new gun system partway through and the ability to fire SM-2 extended range missiles. How interesting. Wow. However, this class would see the reduction of the Seawiz sea -wiz protection mounts to one, removal of the harpoons ship to ship missiles, SLQ 32 V2 instead of V3 and removal of the TAC test. This class has been restarted recently, DDG 113115, due to the issues with the Zumwalt class, seeing some Flight 2As being rebuilt with newer tech and Flight 3s. These will add on SPY 6 radars, SLQ 32 V6, alongside other changes to take place. Uh, take the place of the uh, guided cruiser which relied on the Zumbo class succeeding. This addition required more armor to be added to the hull to offset the heavy SPY-6. I should say hello Daishi by the way. Thank you. DCS specific info, the Ollie Boat class, Oscar Austin subclass, guided missile destroyer, DDG, General Dynamics, Iron Bathworks, main yard number 506, DDG 112, the Michael Murphy. Uh, it was laid down in, ooh, 2010. I had no idea it was so new. So it's 10 years old from Kiel laid, laid down. How interesting. Launched essentially a year later and commissioned in mid-2012. 82 were planned. Yikes, that's a lot of destroyers. Four on order and six buildings, 67 complete and active. 
Original run, 21 flight 1, 7 flight 2, 34 flight 2A. And we've got the flight 2A. Restart run, 3 flight 2A, uh, 3 active. 10 flight 2A technology insertion, 2 active, 3 launch, 1 delivered, 2 kills laid down, 1 contract awarded. 13 flight 3 version, 1 kill laid down. Two contracts awarded, 11 approved for construction. General characteristics will the flight one, two, two A, and three. Uh, so full. So we are. So we are a little. He yeah, we are a bit heavy for destroyer. Destroyer was up to eight thousand tons, wasn't it? Thereabouts. Well, the tonnage is kind of arbitrary compared yeah. to like the roll that it does, but typically right. the roll the rolls determine how heavy it gets. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So they got heavier as they went on, which you'd expect. Length, only increased by about four feet. The beam stayed the same. The draft was quite high for a, seemed quite high for a destroyer, but maybe that's just my eyes. Thirty feet. Speed. Destroyers are always fast. It's just part of their makeup. Uh, flank speed's going to be over thirty-one knots by the looks of it. Range. 4,000, 4,000, so four, four and a half thousand nautical miles at cruise 20 knots. 20 knots is quite high for cruise, isn't it? Cruise is usually 15, yeah. 16 knots. How interesting. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's thanks to the uh, gas turbine engines. They're more efficient at higher speeds. Roger. Cruise to 329 to 337. Engineering, four times General Electric, LM2530. Uh, they are 26 and a half thousand horsepower each so that's over uh, 110,000 horsepower or something uh, combined gas no gas uh, flight three adds electric motor to each shaft for low speed efficiency two shafts variable pitch propellers uh, we've got three times ag9140 electric generators at a gross 10,000 kilowatts uh, so that's a 10 megawatts 440 volts Flight 3 with, uh, well, that you can see there. Interesting. So that's 110,000 horsepower for 8 to 9,500 tons. That's quite a high power-to-weight ratio, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, a lot of it is just simply about the speed, really. <laughs> I'm going to jump. Okay. I've seen other planes, I think, other ships with that motor in, but okay. Very good. Systems. Uh, this is going to be a long video. Really long, just scrolling down. So go and get your coffee, get your cup of tea, and settle in. The fact is, these um, these modern ships ha have a vast amount of systems. So, systems. With an SPS 73V12 up to 180 kilometers, this is a two dimensional low air surface search and navigation short range uh, for use. So, this is like the civilian antenna that we see for navigation. Understood? We have the SPS 67V3 up to 65 kilometers is a two-dimensional. When we say to move two-dimensional, we mean like the kind of radar that you would get in an aeroplane. Okay, so you scan your, God, I can't remember your altitude and your azimuth, and then you do a ranging scan uh, separately, so two-dimensional. Uh, low air surface search radar with IFF capability, V3, plus digital enhancements to focus on move only moving targets, uh, ATD. What's ATD? Automatic target detection, I believe. Okay, and uh, track was scan. SPY dash one DV unknown is up to three hundred twenty-five kilometers, an altitude of sixty-one kilometers, which is really high. Um, and uh, one thousand six yeah. kilometers BDM. What BMD? What's that? Uh, that's ballistic missile defense. You're mm. making the uh, spy radars point directly up. Also, the V is just how they call it. There's right. just the one D and one D V. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to sit and look there. Why would you need to search up 61 kilometers? But then I realised, obviously, right, ballistic missile protection. How interesting. Has this ever been tried and proven? This ballistic missile interception. Yeah, they've done a couple runs with the uh, SM3s and the mm. and SM6s. How interesting. Uh, this is a 3D PESA air radar with IFF non-cooperative target recognition. I wonder how that works. That'd be interesting. Jet engine modulation. Um, yep, sorry, go I ahead. Could, yeah, I know a little bit about it. How it works is that it looks at the radar return, and it's like, okay, the engines look like this, this looks right. like that, so therefore this is probably a MiG-21, so right. they get recognized as such. So similar with, uh, yeah, similar in modern aircraft radars. 
track loss scan with missile uplink and better low flying tracking. Um, v has literal area processor upgrade, whatever that means, coded waveform, and improved signal processing. Sounds a lot Chinese to me. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that before we move on? Well, Latoral, basically think of that as being like close to the shore, so you're going to be with a lot of ships and such nearby and much more traffic. Modra, okay. Well, three times SPG 62, range 305 kilometers, 30 kilometers altitude, continuous wave, thermal guidance radar for the SM2. Ah, so continuous uh, wave. Terminal. Start. Yep, terminal, it's a gui terminal, guidance. There you go. terminal <laughs> guidance radar, right, for the SM2. So when the SM2, right, okay. Yep. Um, and ESSM. ESSM. We did study that. But can you remind our viewers of what the ESSM is? Enhanced Sea Sparrow missile. They took the Sea Sparrow, which is effectively the same as the Sparrow, and when the uh, Air Force dropped out for the AMRAMs, they just dramatically redesigned this missile. It looks closer to an SM2 than a... Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, and can be timeshare between different missiles. So this... SPG-62, by the sounds of things, can guide multiple uh, missiles, the SM-2 and the Sea uh, Sparrow, on its terminal phase to hit in the target. Well, roughly what it does is that every three seconds they'll find a new target for the next missile. So you're sending out waves of missiles and then right. it's like, okay, impact, next missile, impact, next missile, impact. Yeah. So this is, again, designed around the whole idea of the um, weak point of the 70s and 80s uh, frigates and cruisers which couldn't defend against multiple as in a lot of um uh, anti-surface missiles and it's saying okay i'm going to chuck a load of sm2s up then i'm going to find them targets or order targets and swap and change and stuff like that how interesting i was unaware so it looks like we need to do some testing this vessel to see what it can handle right um yeah that'd be interesting chuck some um sticks at them and, and see right mark 90 whatever that is question mark this is a fire control radar for the failing sea Wiz. does not have iff so it shoots at anything and that has happened in real life uh could consist of search radar and fine-tuned tracker short range okay and that's part of the phalanx assembly or is it not yes it is it's the inbuilt assembly isn't it or yep is it it's the big white uh it's big dome. white thing on the top roger awesome there's only one of these on the 2a i think i read there uh, Mark 46 Mod 1, up to 185 kilometers, provides daylight, electro optical, and thermal centers, and laser ranging finding for the gun, fire control system, and the Aegis. So, what is this? This is an electro optical camera or something, is it? Yeah, it's like it's like a camera suite that mm -hmm. sits on top of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're going to find a target, you use that to find it, and then you shoot the gun. It says, one thing the noise. Oh, okay. Can that be used against air targets? Uh, yeah, that is a possibility. I was wondering, because it's got over the horizon um, range, and I was like, well, what's the point if it's if it's line of sight? But obviously you could look at a, you know, an aircraft or something. Okay. SQS-53 Charlie V1, up 75 kilometers range. Active passage, digital sonar system with connections to digital computer sound processing. So this is listening for subs and ships, or just subs? You're usually going to use it more for subs and uh, trying to figure out how deep the water is. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we've got an SLQ-25A Nixie, which I recognize off something else. Uh, up to two kilometers, question mark. Okay. Toad decoy, torpedo decoy connected with five optics literal cable can simulate louder machinery noises for target ship. Oh, God. Has magnetic countermeasures, better waveform info, and also send active pings back to to torpedo but louder so my understanding is this thing is something we tow behind us and it pretends to be the ship so the torpedo goes for it and not the ship right correct nixie okay very good well, next we're heading into electronic warfare which is where it gets super nerdy uh we're going to slq 32 av2 uh, receive only uh oh, i may need some help with this but esm electronic support measures system that acts like a radar warning receiver can receive not only radar signals used on most aircraft and missiles the h2j electromagnetic band but also targeting and surveillance radars for early warnings for being j bands how interesting so it sounds like a yeah. much improved rwr yeah the the band number the letters they used i realized later on is different than the ones you're used to with the x and the ka bands mm -hmm. Read this to mean anything between VHF and EHF. 
So that's very high frequency to extremely high frequency? Yep. Watch so out. it will pick, pick anything up from like the Kirov's lower frequency mm. things up to fighter jet um, tracking radars. Mm. Mm. Very good. Cool. Uh, where are we? Mark 53 decoy launcher system. It's going to be trap and flare and stuff, I guess. The Mark 36 decoy launching system becomes uh, the system when Nalka components are installed, capable of consisting only Nalka launchers, or can be installed alongside six tube launchers of the Mark 36. And then we've got here is the ammo types, if ammo is the right word. Uh, can't think of a cartridge types, maybe. Four times two, Mark 13 Mod 10 8 total, launcher for the Nolka Seduction Decoy. This decoy is a rocket launch and uses the rocket to hover, interesting, in place while transmitting a, transmitting a signal that mimics the radar signature of the ship. So this is going to take, yeah, uh, this is going to take radar guided missiles, right? Yep. Like a, a, an RB 15 or something, or, you know, harpoon. Yeah, roughly mostly everything you, you're firing at DCS right now is uh, radar. Yeah, I should say at this point, uh, almost, no, in fact, I think all oh, none of this is modelled in DCS. It's just not a proper ship, you know. The ships sit there, they fire their guns, but none of the EW is modelled, probably never will be. It's just going to get a bit too complicated, I think, at that point. Probably too hard as well. 6x6, um, six six, Mark 137, Mod 12, 6x40 uh, each. Uh, how am I reading this? Ammo uh, varies on cartridge used... Ammo. Yeah. No, no, all start time found. Okay, you're going to have to read this to me. It's going to be a bit funny. Yeah, basically, um, I put some of them when I know when they started building them, but mm -hmm. I couldn't confirm all of it. Right, and okay. I'm also not entirely sure which ones are still used and which ones aren't, so I just kind of threw them all in there. All right, well, we'll blast through them. So possibilities are SR Bok, uh, which is 130 mil mortar decoys and three tubes. Okay. We've got the C Nat two one four and two one six. What are the C Nats? Are they the chef? Yeah, there's different names for the chef. Like the SR Bach is super blooming, super rapid blooming off board chef, which that one just throws huge clouds of uh chef to try to to try to seduce missiles mm. to it, which is a seduction whereas distraction like the uh, Mark two fourteen is just mm. a giant cloud to uh, obscure all. radar. Roger, different types of chaff there. Yeah, absolutely. Got Mark 186 torch, which is your flares, right? Yeah. Yep. Like We've got an EX252, never heard of. Multi stage IR flare in order to walk off an IR seeker starts with high intensity flare, then goes to long lasting flare. So it's not just distracting, or it's not just seducting, but it's actually actively trying to prove that it is a thing that should be hit. Okay. Think of it as like having a flare, but that flare is launching its own flares. <laughs> Roger. A lot of research must have gone into all these flares and stuff. Uh, we've got a Mark 245 Giant. Deploys five sub munitions, releasing warm smoke, glowing particles, and gas radiation each. Can walk off IR seekers. Okay. Uh, we've got Chaff Star. Produces large cloud of chaff, creating a radar cross section of 10 kilometers squared. To from uh, eight to eighteen gigahertz up to twenty kilometers squared for spot frequencies. Okay, I mean, it doesn't mean much to me, but what that mean what it's saying is it creates a lot of radar <laughs> return. Yeah, just just imagine like if you've ever seen chef released on like mm. your the weather radar, you've got like that giant uh the red and green that just pops mm. up on the weather mm. screen for half an hour. It's roughly this. Yeah, and at the end of the day, the older the missile that's been fired at you the less, you know, clutter, anti-clutter processing ability is going to have. So the older the missile being fired at you, the more likely this chaff is going to do its job. Okay, you've got Super Gemini, uh, combo with IR and chaff, 30 second flare and cloud with eight kilometers radar cross section. Super Hiram 3, Spark Boy, bright flare, creates 2.5 M flame, not what's M, meter, flame, that, Re replicates the large ship heat signature, the funnel or something. Swo IR six sub munition releasing IR clouds, each one bigger than the last. Fifteen second burn time. Slad acoustic torpedo decoy it sends out a jamming signal and sends out simulated ship noise. Uh, lead acoustic torpedo decoy spreads decoy in a pattern. Okay, very good. 
Pushing on now with the SLP-49, passive, floating passive radar reflector that looks like a ship to a radar. Dropped via rails. DLF-2 is improved version with larger uh, ECS DLF-3 used fixed launch tubes known as to UK as rubber duck can act as a suction jig. Could you explain a bit more about this? I've never heard of this before. Uh, this is like a giant aluminum. If you uh, if you played games, you've got like a twenty sided dice. Imagine like a large one of those being thrown off the ship. All right. And when the radar hits it, it just gets reflected all over the place. It looks like a giant. It looks like a giant return, and either the missile or the guy running the radar might think that that's an actual target. Okay, very interesting. Next, we've got satcoms and comms. God, there's a lot of comms. <laughs> uh, where are we? Two times OE five seventy A WSC one ultra high frequency satcom can establish connection with the UHF follow on sat constellation for uses such as D Dharma voice and data comms. Was Dharma again? Uh, oh, dynamically available multiple access I think it's Roger. roughly what it's saying is that multiple people can access the same frequency and such Roger I've been talking about these satcoms recently and they have a lag time don't they of yeah. it is, a couple of seconds because you got to go bounce around satellites and bounce around the world basically interesting yeah oh yeah dam is actually like a, a multiplex so you've got multiple uh, multiple things on one frequency uh, Roger okay with a USC 38 Extremely high frequency satcom uh, used to connect to Milstar compatible satellites. So Milstar is that military only? I'm guessing. And yep, this um, yep, this one and UHF are military only. Okay, for secure jam resistant, low probability of intercept comms makes sense. A secure alliance. Two times WSC dash six V nine designed to send voice, video, and data can connect to both civilian and military based constellations for high speed data transfer. Okay. Uh, from 2014 onwards, two times WSC9 Navy multiband terminal designed to replace multiple systems to provide connections to super high frequency, extremely high frequency base networks and new networks such as the advanced EHF satellite network. Lots of networks. Uh, high frequency radio systems capable of voice and data using both WHIP and fan wire antennas. Is that for ship to ship only? Uh, this could be used for ship or ship to shore. Okay. Effectively, like, uh, this is just the same stuff that they've been using since, like, the yeah. 1900s. I was gonna say, so this is, yeah, only partially over yeah. the horizon. It's not, okay. Well, you can actually, if you yeah. get the, get it right, you can get it over there. Like, I remember seeing someone from South Carolina speaking to someone in Denmark using HF. So you can get really far Roger. if it's right. Some amazing effects you can have with bending electromagnetism. But, okay, very good. VHF UHF point to point, so this is like a aeroplane radar radio, I guess, used for um, UHF line of sight, surface to surface voice, data communications, unsecure presumably, but not sure. SSR one AS two eight one five antennas designed to receive teletype communications from satellite. What's teletype mean? Uh, teletype. Think of it as like uh, using a computer to do uh, Morse code, except really fast. Roger. Interesting. Right, uh, systems. We've got the Aegis Mark 7 baseline 7 CCS. So when we were talking about Aegis, uh, the combat control system connected all sensors. So it's like you said, you connect all your sensors up so the computer can make proper decisions because it's better than a human, right? Like in yep. the, old, the old frigates and stuff. Weapons, I mean, one thing I found amazing, even in the kind of 80s frigates, which I considered, well, I mean, I, you know, you've, the, almost all of the system have got a human manning them. And it's all about that human more than the actual system and it's incredibly fallible so Aegis you're kind of integrating everything into computers right and to be more intelligent yeah yeah and it's able to help you show different decisions and basically it shows what these things are and you make the decisions in there Roger and console together with control and decision computer and weapons control system for quick reactions can track 128 well you're not going to get more 128 sticks thrown at you, so targets. Baseline 7 is made at least of CEC. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that, but you get the idea. All sorts of stuff there that we can support. Uh, in fact, I'm interested now. CEC, so you've got the spy, which we've talked about, the B, MD, we've talked about the lamps, anti submarine? Uh, yep, that's for talking to your uh, helicopter. Right, yeah. SM2 is the missile, obviously, with the Block 3B. Talk to the MIT, to torpedoes. 
and advanced tactical support. Advanced tactical support. Is that anything of interest? Or do we know? Oh, uh, yeah, that one's going to be for... That's like you're helping you make the decisions. So Got it's it. like analyzing everything. Got it. Right, yeah. Um, CC Cooperative Engagement Capability USG2. System that data links members of the battle group to share uh, IFF and sensor data for fire control um, can allow units in that network to use data from other ships to fire or even guide other ships missiles um, so you could have a I don't know uh, another Aegis 100 miles away over the horizon we can fire a missile at him and then he'll guide it to target right yep that's one of the uses that is modeled in DCS to an extent although it seems a bit more like black magic we can't really figure out how it works but you can get it to work or even guide other blah 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 uh, right SQQ 89A V15 EC200-204 anti-submarine anti-submarine yep. combat system capable of combining data from multiple sources it consists of systems such as torpedo warners torpedo tubes classification systems training systems anti-submarine Warfare focus combat and control and uses data from systems such as Sonar Boys, Boys SQS 53C V1 Sonar and Lamps uh, 3. Right, can anyone remember what LAMP stands for? I don't think we can. I can't. No, I don't think we can. Light. Um, shoot. I think it was light something multiple. Ah, uh, crap. <laughs> I remember you get the Lamps choppers and you dip the Lamps buoys in, in the water, don't you, when it detects the oh, submarine? Lamps is, lamps is more of like the system for the whole helicopter, like it involves sending signals and right. processing all that. Copy. Okay, so it's networking as well as, yeah. SQQ-28 lamps signal processing set sends data gathered from a lamps 3 helicopter sonar, MAD and sonar boos to its mothership and also send radar and ESM data to the mothership also. And finally, the data links <clears throat> because these have to talk to other ships and planes. So Link 4A, the old one, I think, uh, the uh, Tomcats, I think, used to use this. So 70s. Data link between air and surface units for ATC, auto carrier landing, uh, air intercept strike vectoring, setting canes. Now, one interesting thing is, this is a 2010 boat. Why the hell is, is anything still on Link 4? I mean, the Tomcats um, died in 2006, didn't they? So... What I the hell think is... there's some, like, I think it's used for helicopters sometimes, like if you've got, like, an older uh, Seahawk Bravo version. Right. Okay, so you're still going to have Link 4 in there. Uh, lamps, light, airborne, multi-purpose system. So, it means the helicopter, it's helicopter, the way it links to the ship. Link 11, I can't remember what uses Link 11, I think it's ships only. Uh, secure data for US ships and some aircraft near real-time tactical picture. Uh, okay, Link 16, that's the one that's prolific still, as far as I'm aware, just in fighters and ships. Secure jam resistant TDMA data link for joint operations uh, can be used, sent over line of sight, SATCOM, and over long haul protocols such as TCIP IP, so it doesn't need line of sight, intended to replace Link 4A. Um, I mean, we say it's modern, but this thing is what, 100 kilobits per second now or something? So compare that to a modern, 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 modern data link, it's pretty pathetic, but. Hawk link, never heard of it. Sounds very modern. Provided provides a common data link to the uh, the Sea Hawk, Sea Hawk. Uh, yep, Sea Hawk for command and control, real time sharing, radar, video. So you're going to need more than 100 kilobits per second for this. Uh, sonar, sonar buoy data has a range of 100 nautical miles. So that's a that's an example of a modern uh, data link that's used. Right, jeez, oh, armament's going to be big. Okay. Let me drink a sup of tea and we're going to go on to armament. Hope you guys like missiles. Well, it just so happens that we quite like missiles. Armament, Mark 41 Mod 15 vertical launch system. One times 32 sails, one times 64 with a 96. So you got 32 at the front, 64 at the back, or the other way around? Yep, you got it. Uh, range, depending on missile. Payload, depending on missile. Um, hot vertical launch system capable of accepting many types of missiles contains in canisters. Eight cells are grouped with one exhaust hatch. Didn't know that. This version dispense with at sea loading arms. Right. So what we used to have before this was a loading arm that could fire one missile at a time and then reload in about half a minute and fire another one. Great. No, no. Uh, well, yep. the at sea loading arm is different. Oh. The original Mark uh, 41s were designed with a uh, 
it was like a collapsible crane that you could use to reload at sea. Yeah. But they determined that that was dangerous, and they effectively mm -hmm. welded all those shut. Mm -hmm. All the newer versions, they don't even use that arm anymore. They just put more cells in it. Right. So what? There's still an arm on shore, though, is there? There must be an arm somewhere loading those things. Yeah, you loaded a, you loaded at like a uh, an armory area right. with the. You okay. have their own loading cranes. All right. There must have been accidents then with the arm, like interfering with the missiles or something. I don't know, but okay. Right, so that's what it replaced. Okay, uh, the whole idea of VLS, it obviously is so you can get, well, you increase your rate of fire, right? You get multiple missiles in the yep. air at once. Uh, two every two seconds, I believe, is the fire rate. Yeah, so one a second. So, yeah, it's ridiculous, basically. Again, for the same problems that we talked about earlier. Types of ammo. We've got the RIM-66 2-5 SM... This is an SM-2MR, uh, Block 3 AB standard missile to medium range with a maximum range of 90 nautical miles which really seems like a long range missile to me but okay so that's big this is like i'm just I'm thinking in my head here this is more than s300 ps type missile this is more a naval yeah. grumble this is really long isn't it we're gonna have to test yeah. this and see when i get shot at yeah uh, this one this missile was early 2000s i believe I think the ones modeled in DCS are like a little older. Yeah, I think because you've got different blocks I'm aware. So, yep. we'll have a test. I think it's more like 50 miles for the wild ones. But thumping great warhead in these things is not a hugely accurate missile. Uh, so, they've got a big warhead, 115 kilograms, as opposed to, you know, 10 kilograms or something in a sidewinder. So, you know, 10 times as big or more. HG directed frag. I'm not sure what directed frag means, but it probably doesn't mean yeah, a lot. Uh well, with some of these fragmentation rounds, you can direct where the fragments go. How interesting. I've never heard of that before. Uh, yeah, it's roughly... Think of it as like, uh, you know, like how you have a shape charge, but it directs mm -hmm. it to one area. Mm -hmm. Sort of like that, except you can do different patterns like rings and X's and a couple other things. How interesting. That's, okay, that's for another video, but I was unaware of that. Right, anyway, it's a SAM missile. It can be used against just about anything, as far as I'm aware. It can also target ships. Autopilot is designed to fly most efficient path to target. Mid-course uses INS and the SPY-1, SPY which we talked about earlier, to command the terminal guidance... Uh, to command it. Terminal... Sorry, I'm doing bad here. The mid-course is inertial navigation system plus the SPY-1 command guidance. Then, when it goes terminal, it uses the SPG-62 semi-active radar homing. Uh, and block 3A, a newer seeker head warheads and roll into target. 3B, as an IR seeker head on, term, on terminal, it compares IR and SBG 62 uses the best signal. So the 3B, I don't know what we get, but the 3B. Definitely not 3B. <laughs> right, so that would have IR redundancy, or if, you know, as in, so if the FB, SBG 2 signal is not great and it's not going to get accurate enough, it's going to use its own IR sensor, right? Correct. How interesting. Didn't know such a thing existed. You know what? That sounds like an expensive missile to me. Yeah, a lot of these definitely got some high price tags on them. Yeah, Roger. Okay, so that's kind of a mixture of a... I don't know what it is. A mixture of a... Well, okay. Interesting missile. Next, we've got the RIM 156A SM2ER. I'm guessing that's going to be extended range. Block 4, standard to extended range missile. So similar to what we had before, but a bigger and or more efficient motor. At 130... Miles, God, how far? Just just imagine if you had these when they were developing the Tomcat. That would have been like, no, no point. SM2s. Crazy. Payload, 62. Interestingly, it's got half the warhead. I'm guessing it's got extended range because it's got half the warhead and they found a way of making it more accurate and or deadly. Yeah, that's part of what they did is made the, made the warhead a little less heavy. My job. Uh, rim, uh, this one... Boost Rim 66 booster stage. It has the same booster stage as before. Oh, oh, what I was saying is, this is basically the Block 2A standard missile with a booster stage. Ah, uh, with a booster stage. Oh, so it gives it that extra. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, like a SA3 or something. Designed to give Aegis equipped ships with a long range option. Can be used to dispatch in atmosphere ballistic missiles. Uh, a block 4A was planned but didn't happen is being phased out for the SM6 I don't know anything about the SM6 is the SM6 in service? actually you're going to be reading about it soon oh god right RIM 161BCD block 
one A, one B, two. Oh, SM three were on here. We don't have these in DCS. I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, ridiculous, game changing. To be honest, boring miles. Five hundred nautical miles or fourteen hundred nautical miles. Theoretical. Uh, these are kinetic. Are these ballistic? Yep, these are anti-ballistic missiles. Hmm. SM three anti-ballistic. Right. So when it says kinetic, that means it hits the thing, right? It, so it doesn't yeah, have a warhead. It, yeah, the final stage has got like a uh, like an IR sensor on it, mm -hmm. and it just it maneuvers its way to it. But when you see how fast these things are going, you're going to see mm. you, you don't really need an explosion. And these right. guys are so far up in the atmosphere, there's no real atmosphere left to transmit a uh, a blast wave. So explosions are not very great unless if you're on top. Right, yeah, I mean, this is beyond, I've studied up to SM2, I've never gone any further, so this is all sci-fi to me at this point. Um, so, impact, I can't even think what that word, that, that number means, 4.5 kilometers per second, what's that? Thousands of miles an hour, right? Thousands of meters, so this is like 3,000 meters a second when it hits. Yikes. Right, so that's that's really interesting. I wonder if this is like, affected thrust final stage. Anyway, let's let's carry on. Based on the Rim One Five Six A, the SM Three is a four stage interceptor for exo atmospheric threats. Block One A uses an I One color IR sensor. Block Two uses two color sensor, better signal processor, and finer controls. Two plus longer intercept period and range, more agile and larger interceptor. Also has GPS. Uh, can be used for ASAT. Is that anti satellite? Yep. And perhaps uh, ICBMs. Right. How interesting. Okay, let's carry on. RIM... I wonder what year it had these SM3s for. RIM once... Uh, 2005, I believe. They were coming in there in the middle of my uh, deployment. Right. Or my time. For so pretty much from the start of the class or something like that. Uh, okay, RIM 1748 extended range active missile. SM6, right. ERAM, SM6. Never heard of this before. It is bigger than 200 miles. Exact range is unknown. Is this surface to... This is not exo-atmospheric, is it? So this is going to be the replacement yeah, this, for the SM2? Yeah, this is the replacement for the ER. Right, okay. Uh, 68 kilo warhead. It uses parts from the SM2 ER, SM3, to enlarge the... And an enlarged AM120C seeker head. Oh, it's a FOX-3. Yes. Far and forget. Right, as an active radar homing missile. So this is the difference, which is a big deal, a uh, really big deal. Can engage targets at higher altitudes than the SM2 and can combine the semi-active system with its active radar homing to find its target amongst the ground clutter like uh, and oh, ASMs? Anti-ship -ship Anti missiles. Anti-ship missile, right. yeah. Yeah, terminal ballistic missiles with dual one upgrade over the horizon targets and CEC and ships. So it has so the big thing about this is it can go further, but also it can uh, it's a Fox Three. It has its own radar on board, which which is really useful when the missile is only six miles away from the thing it's trying to hit. That's much better radar return than the, what the ship's getting. So um, <coughs> when is this a real thing now? SM Six. Yes, this I think it's two thousand and when it started coming out, and also to make this thing even more scary, the CEC can work with AWACS. So the firing missile can fire its missile, mm. and the only warning you're going to get before it turns on its active seeker mm. is a, is an E3. Right, which you're probably going to see anyway. So Yep. <laughs> that's worrying. Really worrying. Right. God, you know what? I'm so glad that DCS doesn't have this kind of level model, because it will be so boring. Within 200 miles of a ship, you'd have no idea this thing was even aiming at you, and suddenly, beep, 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 dead. Right. Yeah, it'd be like trying to dodge a Phoenix missile from a uh, from a destroyer. It would just be stupid, right? Yeah. All right. Well, so be it. Four times Rim One Six Two E S S M. The enhanced Sea Sparrows. We've talked about this thoroughly in the supercarrier we did. Uh, Twenty-four seven plus miles classified. Frag is it's got a fairly big warhead, forty kilos, ninety pounds. Heavily redesigned Rim Seven can work with the Aegis system. House was include longer booster for better acceleration, computer and ah thrust vectoring. Yeah, I remember. Fifty G turns to counter maneuvering anti anti ship missiles. Very good. So this is close in stuff. 
And we've got yep. a BGM, ah, oh, Tomahawks. BGM 109C, we've got these in DCS. Tomahawk land attack, uh, conventional cruise missile block three, 900 kilometers, jet engine based. 1,000 pound warhead. Cruise missile designed for hardened targets such as airfields and naval bases. Use GPS, INS, Termcom, and Dizmac. Don't know what those two are. Can have uh, send. Yeah, Termcom is a, a, a terrain conformance. It it uses like a, a signal to see what the radar is or what the uh, altitude is underneath it. So it's like yeah. you can tell if a mountain's coming out to a hollow can fly. Mm -hmm. And DS Mac combines multiple maps together to figure out where it's at. Very good. Can have multiple flight modes be programmed in one hour, loiter in an area, yikes, for time on target and be given a new GPS target using TTWCS Tactical Tomahawk Weapons Control System. Very cool. I think we've got the, I can't remember if we've got the Ds or the, I think we've got the Bravo models, BGA, uh, the Delta yeah, model. I, Sorry, go yeah, ahead. You got uh, probably an early version of the C, I think. Roger. Yeah, okay. Uh, next, we've got the cluster variant, the suspensor variant, 700 nautical miles. We've got the 166BLU-97B boblet shape charge and frag incendiary. Cruise missile meant for soft targets like aircraft and air defences. Use GPS, same guidance as we had before. Can have multiple flight modes. Programmed to less than an hour. Time on target. Lloyd to receive a new GPS target with TTWCS. Has 22 canisters of 7 bomblets and 2 canisters of 6 bomblets. You know what size, what the bomblets are like? Um, I think they're roughly close to some of the bombets we have in DCS. I think, although I can't. Yeah, actually, I've just I've just answered myself. The ninety-seven. That is, we've got those bomblets in the uh, GBU. Oh, brain's gone. The GBU one hundred seven, one hundred five. Yeah, JDAM, I think. No, it's not the JDAM. It's a um, it's a cluster type munition. Um, I've just forgotten exactly what it's called now, but uh, I know I want to get in. Anyway, I've got an Echo, which is. What's this? Echo model, never heard of this. Tactical Tomahawk land attack missile. Block 4, 900 miles, 1,000. Designed for hardened targets include anti-jam GTS and UHF sat uplink to allow redirection to 15 pre-planned targets or new ones on flight. So you can send it a new one on flight. You can also yep, log um, yeah, so an example of that. Yeah, in fact, um, the ship I was on, USS Stephen, was used as the test uh, ship for this missile. Oh, how interesting. So how it works is that in mid-flight, uh, either maybe you get a report from like your your ground crew to be like, hey, this missile, this target's already been hit. You can redirect the missile. And then also you can get a video signal from it to scan the area, do like a BDA, and then find a new target. One jump. Okay. We've got a ROM... 139 vertical launch anti submarine rocket. So that's VL ASROG. 20 nautical miles. Oh, God, this reminds me of some of the old Soviets. Similar stuff. Mark 54 lightweight torpedo. A Ruhr 5 ASROG that was designed to be compatible with the Mark 41 VLS ascent effectively. It's a rocket launch torpedo that flies to a designated point using INS and drops a torpedo to locate from here. So it's a kind of a modern version of the uh, Russian ones we were stopped, uh, studying a while ago, right? Yeah, this is like the... Uh, that was like the ancestor to this missile, the one that made them design the, their uh, yeah. uh, Silex. Roger. Um, consists of the Mark 41 lightweight torpedo. So once the torpedo's been dropped, uh, its max speed is uh, less than 40 knots with a depth of 1,200 feet. With a 50 kilo... Oh, it's a small one, isn't it? Oh, it's very small. Yeah. 50 kilo warhead. Okay, so it's got to get right up to the sub to do some damage. Um, new torpedo combining parts of the 46, 48, 50 torpedoes. Meant to operate effectively in shallow and deep water while being cheaper than the Mark 50. Uses active or active and passive sonar. Okay, very good. Right, uh, we've got one times one more... Friday f more Mark 45 mod 4, 5 inch, 62, and can carry 680 of them. They are, I don't know what these are yet. Uh, what is uh, this? Those are, the, those are the ammunition types. Oh, this the is warhead. the 5 inch gun system. Oh, this 5 inch gun, right. So it's the so the Mark 45 is the 5 inch gun, right. I carry that many rounds, and these are the bullets, the shells, right. Up to around 20 nautical miles, we'll test that. Can vary on the charge used. Varies on shell used to see below. New 5-inch gun system with longer barrel improvements intended for um, 
with over the horizon rounds such as ERGM before those projects failed. Features a reduced radar cross section turret. So, the shells are Mark 80 HEPD? A high explosive point detonating. Right, okay, 31 uh, kilos, high explosive shell using. What's a point detonating fuse? Never heard of it. It's basically like a quick uh, reacting fuse. The moment it hits, a uh, millisecond later explodes. Okay, and we've got a Mark 91, so it's a clever electronics or some kind. Okay, Mark 91, Illum MT, which is illumination round using mechanical timer fuse. This is interesting. This reminds me, do you remember Star Shot? Star? What was this it is pretty much that. Yeah. Okay, because you'd want to illuminate your foes or whatever, or if for IFF you want to illuminate stuff. Mark 116 HEVT, uh, okay, is high explosive shell using variable time radio proximity fuse. Give me an idea of what's that used for, like shooting down a uh, missile? Aircraft. Aircraft. Aircraft right? and missiles, although probably more aircraft. Yeah, makes sense. We've got a HECVT high explosive with a combo time, with a timed and proximity fuse yeah the uh the story behind that was during world war ii they found that the uh, vt fuses would explode by themselves sometimes because they found yeah. that things like rain and like certain mm. weather phenomenon will trigger it mm. so this is designed to activate the uh, radio fuse right before it's gonna mm. hit so calculate you know this many seconds before it should actually be attacking the the vehicle and then turn on your fuse how interesting uh, we've got H-E-I-E-R, H-E with an IR sensor fuse. It's crazy we're at the point of firing bullets with IR sensors on, right? <laughs> yeah, this one's more meant for missiles because they're so... Yeah. We've got a Mark 175, H-E-I-C-M, never heard of that. It is 49 Mark II submunitions, high explosive cargo shell using M2 Army Mod 80 submunitions. I can't think why that's useful. Give us Talk us through that. Um, This is like a cluster uh, munition, more or less. It's got like... I. Th I don't know precisely what the M80 uh, submunition is. I think it's a uh, um, a uh, explosively shaped uh, projectile. You'd use this for like if short bombardments, like if mm -hmm. there's like people there, or you could use it for if there's a swarm of boats going at you. You could just throw this at it. Roger. Okay, fair enough. We've got two times one, uh, twenty-five Mike six seven Mark thirty-eight Bushmasters, so chain guns, whatever you call them. 168 rounds, effective uh, 2,700 yards. Different warheads, I don't think we're going to go through, but all the different warheads that we can have with the gram or the grain, or is it is that the gram weight of the bullet? Uh, yeah, that's the weight of the bullet. 25, could, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. If you want, I can go over them real quick. Send. Armor piercing is dispensing sabo, and the T is the tracer. Uh, that's just meant to fire a armor piercing round. Sabo is used to fire a smaller projectile than the barrel. HEI and HEIT is high explosive incendiary, where it's got a uh, somewhat something like napalm, but not exactly on part of the bullet, so it explodes and then catches fire. Uh, semi armor piercing high explosive incendiary, that's got the HEI round, but behind it, it's got like a solid slug, so it explodes, burns, and then the, uh, the slug will go through and pull all that stuff into the, uh, into the unit. And then uh, FAPDAS is designed to be frangible where it hits the target and it splits apart to prevent ricochets. How interesting. All right, well done. Uh, 25mm electrically operated gun comes with an electro-optical sight, ship roll compensation, improved interface, and ammo loading. Very good. We've got a 1x6 Mark 15 Block 1B Phalanx. So it's a six, it's a six barrel single, single unit. You all know what the Phalanx is by now if you've been watching these videos, but we're effective up to that many yards 1600 yards and it's got the APDS round why would that have armor piercing round some of the Soviet uh, anti-ship missiles were known to have a bit of armor on it mm. okay self contained unit uh, using the 20 mil Vulcan cannon improvements include new gun barrels cartridges and IR sensor for better interception uh, as well as obviously its radar has auto recommend manual mo auto recommend a manual mode does not iff okay so if you want you could just stick that on auto and it'll fire anything that comes within so and so range doesn't it yep as we'll see soon uh four times one brownings uh mark uh mark two brownings um m2 brownings two kilometers effective fires that ammo there and it's a uh mounted whole mounted gun for small boats and pier defenses 
uh, ammo types, yep. We've got two times three. Ah, here's the big boys, the 18 inches. No, not 18 inch, what's that? That's 12 inch. Uh, Mark three mod 15 torpedoes. Uh, the what well, we got here depends on the torpedo, depends on the torpedo. Torpedo tubes designed for use on the DTG 51 weather decks using air pressure tubes operate remotely. Can fire a variety of where is this? Is this superstructure or hull? Yep, uh, this will be near the rear ELS if I recall right. Roger, Mark 51 lightweight, 454 lightweight torpedo classified max, uh, max speed, system 40 knots, depth 1200 feet, carried again, just a small. Uh, 50 kilo war that is very small for a 12 inch okay uh, yeah it's one thing i noticed with the u.s is that we we save the large uh torpedoes for the uh attack subs roger okay so it's not it's not 12 inch 13 inch actually no torpedo combining parts of the okay we've talked about this already mm, we got through it and it was cool some interesting yep. stuff right that was all very good aircraft We've only got one aircraft, uh, two helicopters, two helicopter hangars, each holding one helicopter each as a CSH-60R Seahawk designed to combine the abilities of the SH-60B multiple role first lamps three user and the, this, this really, this wasn't the first lamps user was it? Oh, no, the, uh, the B was the first. Yeah, uh, lamps three, I just misread that. And the SH-60F primary anti-submarine warfare focus. This craft can focus on many roles such as transport recon, Anti-submarine, anti-surface, vert rep, SAR. Something about um, vertical resupply yep. and search and rescue? Yes. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And while the Hilo has the LAMPS 3 block 2 upgrade, grinding abilities such as sharing a live feed through the electrical optical flur and also uh, radar, its data sharing capabilities have been improved as well. For anti-submarine missions, it comes with a... High frequency dipping sonar and sonar booze, but not the MAD from the SH 60B. You may have to cl cl clarify that a bit. I missed... Yeah, MAD's a magnetic uh, anomaly magnetic detector. detector. Right, gotcha. It also can defend itself with trap and blade dispenser, uh, ECM suite, uh, ESM suite, missile warner, and an integrated self defense system for many missile types. Payload, 25 sonar buoys integrated in the left side, an M240 or a GAL-21 50 caliber pylon mount. What's a GAL-21? Is that just a machine gun? Uh, I think that's the Browning, actually, or a variant of it. Eight times, ooh, a Hellfire was unaware of that, using pylon extensions of three times tor torpedoes, likely to be Mark 84. Well, Mark 54, they're going to be massive on that chopper. Uh, I was unaware of that. And launchers for APKWS. Uh, is that the laser guided missile? Uh, rockets. High yes. assembly modified laser guided more loadouts, maybe likely. Wow, what an interesting piece of kit. Yeah, also, one of the valued viewers found what the uh, acronym was. It's and LAMP stands for Light Airborne Multi Purpose System. Some of the information about the SM2s isn't easy to access, therefore may be errors. There are a couple of differences between specific ships of the same class, making some ships unique. Yep. This sh this class of ship has often been used to compare with other nations' destroyer too, likely to the highly versatile nature of the class, able to take on many different missions as needed. In fact, there are many ship classes that are inspired or built with licensed Aegis. These include the JM, SDF, Japan, Congo, Maya. Where's Maya? Malay Maya, Maya, these are class names. So oh, sorry. Congo class, Maya class, yeah, and Akagi. Yeah, uh, sorry, South Korea, those, Australia, those, China, those. And we've got both of those in DCS, I think, the 52C. No, we've got the 52B and the 52C. Don't have 52D. Yeah. Roger. I doubt we're going to see that one. <laughs> no, uh, this is going to be a new one, presumably. We've got a DGT. Uh, this is going to be interesting. What's this? DDG. Yeah. Are these whole numbers? Yeah, these whole numbers uh, have variations between them because there's a lot of stuff that happened right. more in the build. Mine hunting, yeah. I mean, there was a lot. There's a lot of variation in these because there's so many, right? There's eighty something of them I read up there. Yep. Right. Images. Uh, it's gonna be the one. Well, it's the it's one of relevance. So we've got TACAN, tactical air navigation at the top there. Obviously, we're gonna have that. We've got extremely high frequency satellite link. We've got a link sixteen. 
uh, suite there. We've got an SPS 67 there, a 73 there, a UHF SATCOM there, a SPG 62 there, a WSC 6 there. I've got to memorize this somehow, and another there. Got a Mark 46. Is the what was the Mark 46 of it? Is that the gun? That's the uh, yeah, that's the laser finder and uh, uh, optical. Oh, oh no, Mark 45 is a gun, right? Yeah, oh, I see. UHF sat there as well, SPY 1D there and there. So these are the what you know the electronically scanned radar duties. Yep. So phalanx there. So phalanx is only coverage from the front hemisphere, or whatever the word is. Actually, yeah, it's an error with this model. That should be empty. There should only be one at the rear. Oh, one at the rear. How interesting. Right. Okay. Uh, SOQ 32V2. We've got a Mark 38 mod two there, we've got the Nolka defense there, the actual phalanx there, the SPG-62 there, 32 there, we've got the Hawk line, the modern Hawk data link system there, we've got the Mark 41 VLS there, so that's 30, is it 64 at the back, 32 at the front, yeah, by the looks yep. of it, yeah, 32, we've got a Mark 32, 115 again there, we've got the 45, Mark 45, five inch gun there, um, it seems to have, it's got four turbines. It seems to have four funnels exits as well. Interesting. Yeah, and then the, the two smaller ones and the third smaller one, which is near the Hawk Link, those are for mm -hmm. the generators. Roger, very good. Uh, source is there, come and read this if you want valid views. Right, should we go and check it out in DCS? Let's do this. Stand by. Welcome back, valued viewers, we're now in DCS. Let's have a look at the model. So yeah, indeed, hole number 112. It's a modern vessel, so it's top of the range in terms of polygon count and whatnot. Mark 45. Oh wow, they got the anti-skid uh, modeled. What's that? If you look at it, if, if you look at the uh, surface of the ship, you'll notice that it's got that really grainy texture to it. Wonder. Think okay. of that as roughly like a popcorn painting. Okay. Like how on the top of that, but it's uh, really grippy. It's designed to help keep you from slipping. But if you if you trip when you land on that little, it's gonna hurt. Yep. All right. There's your SM2s and your Tomahawks and your uh, torpedoes and stuff and your VLS. How long does it take to replace VLS, as in new, with new ammo? I don't know. I remember it could take a couple hours. Now here's an interesting one, D. We've got two Vulcan cannons. We've got two phalanxes. Yeah, like I said, the front one's an error. Right. Okay. So be it. Um, right, all the various antennae and stuff we were talking about, we're not going to go through them, but there they are, Takan at the top. Oh, look, you can see it's a tiny little VOR Takan, look. That's so cool. Yep. Right, cool. Got that. We've got the slope sides for stealthy, stealthy. Got the the big, um, oh, I can't remember what they're called now, but the, the arrays here. Actually, it looks like they modeled the railings right, too, because if you notice, not only are they uh, yep. angled, yep. but... These should also be like diamond shaped instead of just circular. Yeah, I was just looking at that. A little binoculars for binoculars, man. Some things never change. Yeah, so you can see the railings are kind of like sideward, uh, or angled. Yep. Interesting. Now, what are they? They're just cooling vents, I think. Yeah, those are, yeah, vents. <laughs> so I wonder if we've got two of the steamers at the front, two turbines at the front, two turbines at the, turbines at the back. Yeah. Th that would be main one and main two. Okay, we've got something here. I wonder what that is there. It's where the harpoons would have been, the midships. Uh, that would be used for when you're replenishing at sea. You can connect a uh, cargo wire, yeah. wire between a uh, replenishment ship and yours and uh, conveyor over uh, mail, ammo, right. some ammo, um, food, everything that you need. <laughs> Roger, okay, we've got our Azrocks and whatever, I can't remember the proper names, we've got our countermeasures yep. here, physical countermeasures. Uh, we've got some Bushmaster. Oh look, it's got a little ledger optical slash IR site on it. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the EO sensor. Right, so that can probably be controlled from the command center slash Aegis. Interesting. Yep, you can throw that inside, you don't even need to be outside for it. Roger, I haven't seen any of the uh, machine guns yet. Boats here. Yeah, I don't think they might have the Brownings on her because you don't always have the M the uh, M2s mm -hmm. mounted. Also, yeah. another goofy thing about the model, if you look at the top, the back two SPGs, yep. they should be pointed 
towards aft, not forward like that. Roger, I get the feeling they're probably in here. They'll probably are they fire control radar? I've forgotten. Yeah, they're yep. probably going to pointing yeah, towards where agreed. the missile's going. Yeah, agreed. So you should be saying they should default us off though. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've got the mic. Just a minor. We've got the mic twos here. Oh, there they are. Yep, and we've got the uh, baby torpedoes here. Yep. Uh, we've got uh, the big VLS here, 62. We've also, got... another fun, mm -hmm. fun fact, which is, shows how well modeled they have it. If you look by that torpedo launch, you'll see that little tube thing there. Uh, I believe... Yeah. yeah, that black tube thing, I believe, is used for... Uh, Underway replacement, if I'm looking at that right. Isn't it air pressure? Which, what these happens air, these is... These air pressure launched, aren't they? Uh, yeah, but that tube's meant for, like, taking on fuel and such. It's oh. Effectively, think of a tanker and a destroyer doing somewhat roughly Formation. like what you mm -hmm. do with, mm -hmm. with yeah, with an F-18 and the uh, mm -hmm. C-130, except they're side-by-side -side at the same speed. Yeah, roger, and they have that tube that goes across, yeah? It always yep. breaks. Um, what are these funny things here? I've never seen... Do we know what these are? Some kind of sensors? Uh, those weren't on my ship, but I think they might be exhausts. How interesting. Okay, um... Been down here already. Down here... Funny little thing here. Just... I wonder what that little hole is. You see the little hole? I'm trying to highlight. I believe... I believe that hole is the exhaust for the third generator. Right, okay. Oh, two hangers, look, here they are, for the two Seahawks. Oh, it is the Michael Murphy, look at that, they even got that right. Very good. The landing space for the choppers is quite small, um, maybe, yeah, well, it's just one chopper at a time landing, obviously, I suppose. Yeah, and if you notice the two tracks on there, there's like a, there's like a yeah. wheeled unit thing that you use to move them in and out. Wicked. So remind me on what vessel you served? Uh, DDG-63, Steatham. It's like the older brother to this thing. Okay. okay, that's it. I'm chuffed by that model. We've looked at every single one in uh, DCS. That's probably the best, I would imagine. Um, what, what would you, what's your thoughts on it, uh, along with Super Karen? It, I'm impressed with the number of details that's in it that I could point out that's not even operational. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I'm not going to anger the gods, so... Yeah, like, well, I mean, it's like they didn't need to, but they put it in anyway. Roger, fair enough. Um, that there, was that the the FLIR, the big video camera? Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's used for the guns. Right. Right, it's going to make you do stuff. The first thing I want to show is how you can control it, because this is supposed to be a tutorial at the end of the day. So, to fulfill my legal stipulations, I'm going to go choose Coalition Blue, Game Master. You could be a tactical commander, I suppose. I'm going to select the ship I want to drive. I'm going to click it there. I can change its ROE, its rules of engagement, fire, return fire, and hold. I'm going to leave it on fire. State. Obviously, the ship has a red and a green state. Uh, uh, automatic. That's currently not working anyway, so I'm just going to leave it on auto. We can select the speed. It's going to be in miles per hour, which is stupid, I know, but that's just how it is. So I want that about 27 knots or something. Depth, relevant, obviously, only for submarines. I'm going to set path. So set path uh, to... Left click, left click, left click, right click to found the path. And let's just check that she is going to move. Okay, off she goes. Uh, if I want to choose a target, I've probably got nothing to fire. Well, why don't I try? Add target. Let's see what she does. She may do something. She may do nothing. I just want to target there to begin with. Um, and um, that's what I've done. I've just added target. Let's see if she does try and fire a VLS or anything. There, I've got a, what, Tomahawk or an SM2... Oh, yeah, that, there goes a Tomahawk. Oh, it's a Bravo. It's an older one, look. That's weird, because Bravos were typically used for yeah, anti-ship. It's, it's all they've got modeled. That's all it is. Yeah, I'm not going to get too upset over it. Because ideally, what that one would be is a very large warhead, like 400 pounds, but it only has like an active radar seeker. Boom! That there and that's got a range of basically longer than we ever want so we could just click attack there in the middle of russia and it will just fire that missile out that's as much i'm going to show there next we're going to skip forward time move it in for some close combat and let's use some guns stand by okay now i'm not going to lie this might be sexy what we've done oh already jesus oh that wasted no time at all <laughs> it really didn't 
that's the Aegis system. Look, see, there's, remember, there's usually a massive time between hits, but because of the Aegis, it's just constantly firing. I need to try and get a nice little picture while I'm here. Yeah, plus it's also got the longer, uh, the longer barrel for higher, longer ranges. Yeah, there's an interesting story about that. I might have to bring it up sometime. Also, it looks like the Bushmaster's firing too. Yeah. Oh, really? Let me try. Yeah, the Bushmaster's shooting. The Sea Wiz is shooting. Jesus. It is going to town. That's making sh compared to the other vessels we've used. That's really hitting hard, isn't it? Yeah. I can't see it because they've got them smoke. So the 45's firing. Sea Wizards appear to be out of ammo now, but they definitely were firing. Bushmaster's aiming, look. Maybe out of ammo as well. It's not used for sustained shots like this. And it's no longer aiming. So it's just the well, 45 it might be, now. It might be because of some of that smoke there. It is an EO system. It's great to see this phalanx is going at the same time. They will recharge themselves of ammo, but it takes several minutes, so... That... Well, that was very good. Next, what we're going to do is put it up against a ship. And the most contemporary, you know, it's pointless putting... Oh, they're already fighting. It's pointless putting it against a crappy ship. We're going to put it against a contemporary ship. A possibly... Well, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get myself in trouble. But what we've got here is a Type 52C Chinese destroyer, which is... I don't want to say copied, but how do you want to say that? It's their take on the Aegis system. Right. It's got its own differences and it would take a while to even discuss all of it yeah it's three we've done a full hour-long video if you want to go and watch that it's three years newer than the arlie burke uh at least our whole number what we're gonna do is reset so we can get a fair fight now the interesting thing is that the chinese one retained its um anti-ship missiles its harpoon chinese harpoons whereas ours have been removed from the arlie burke they just i guess seemed irrelevant with the you know ability of the sm2 so what we're going to see is what you know is that going to make a difference so already this guy's ch chucking missiles out look at them it's going to be the oh look they're, they're the harpoons look so let's just stop that whoa well, the first thing is how quickly they've started firing at each other bear in mind these ships are over the horizon 22 miles is way over the horizon so we've used sensors one way or another to detect over the horizon ships we're belting away at them uh we've used a yj62 so these are Chinese harpoons that have come out, as you can see, uh, as I call them. Yep. And these are going to be SM2s of an unknown block. Just going to have a look at them. Actually, I don't think those are Chinese harpoons. Those are designed off of the TASM, that the thing I was discussing earlier, earlier with that uh, that B variant of the Tomahawks. Roger, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I didn't explain that very well. But what I just meant it was that they were the equivalent. They were like this, you know, surface-to-surface yeah low riding missiles you. yeah yeah okay let's see what happens now are these self-defense against these or are these attack missiles i don't know because the sm2 can be used for all sorts of things i guess we'll find out it looks like they're used for self-defense looks like we're shooting down the yj62s maybe it really it's hard to tell yep they're Elf. shooting down the they're shooting down the doodars look Get yeah, some. Also, <laughs> we can make a guess it's not the uh, SM2, uh, the one at the IRs, because it'd have a little, More it'd have a little bump on one of the sides if it was. Right. So we've neutralised the anti-ship missiles. Basically, is what we've done, which is good. And they're quite slow, and they're quite high. No, they're low, 75 feet. That is actually very low, but they're slow, 450. And there've been all kinds of solutions of getting these missiles through. A guy's defense over the years you've got low you've got maneuvering you've got fast you've got some hypersonic anti-ship missiles uh, from the russians a long time ago um so you know it's just different these look like they're just going low and hoping for the best possibly some kind of ec uh, esm yeah these are designed for long range engagements mm -hmm. absolutely well they're about to get a smack down oh missed Boom! The face. Directed frag. Right. Ah! And it's dead. What the hell hit it? Has it blown itself up somehow? It's blown what? itself up. Because we never hit it. Um... Right. Was there a... 
I think I might know what happened. I think we might have found a bug. I, I think what it might have done is that if you notice how far back the, the launchers are, I think some of those uh, Chinese uh, TASMs may have gone out and then you turned itself you, right oh, into the bridge. Dear. So this well, is like a direct little thing, I think. All eight fired out from here, look. Oh no, you're right. Oh yeah, all eight fired. Oh. We're going to have to watch it again. Now, we've never seen this before, valued viewers. Mr. Wagner will not be happy, but this is our job at the end of the day, so let's go and find out what went wrong. Blue, uh... So it's got eight of them, hasn't it? We're going to be firing pretty much straight away, so we've got to yeah. charge down there and look at him. Here he is. The textures load. It's turning to starboard. Turning to starboard. That looks okay. That looks okay. So we can see if that turns around and shoots himself in the face. No? They're not doing it, look. I think it might. You see how it's going left and right? Why do you reckon it's going like that? Uh, it's uh, evading. These are, they're, they've got evasive maneuvers now. So, yeah, what he's trying to do is he's trying to go back and forth to try to mess up anything that's getting hit with the, uh... Watch out, it's full health. Like guns or missiles. Watch out. Fired. Oh! Oh, in the face! Did oh, see what? That? He shot... Bug! 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 Oh... Right. Slightly embarrassing. Probably due to his uh, pitch roll trim, whatever, what's it called in a ship? You know, like how yeah. it rolls over? Yeah, it, you're, you're rolling, hit, yeah. He's hit his own hull. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I saw how it spawned and then, then the launcher lifted up, which caused it to detonate. Mm hmm. Oh. Hey, when you're done with that cap, send me that mission. Roger. I've got another one as well, actually. But yeah. Uh, right. So it shot itself. How embarrassing. It's, I think it's that new dodging kind of algorithm they put in. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not compatible for the high. <laughs> Imagine if you had like thirty of those just shooting each other out. Well, that's why we do it. Uh, so it turns out, and this is not expected at all. Turns out that the Siberia vessel is the Art Burley, but the Arley Burke, and that's because the Chinese destroyer turns itself and destroys itself with its own missiles. In reality, uh, these probably wouldn't fuse. I doubt before then, so that wouldn't be yeah. possible. Uh, it's just a bug with the programming. Oh. That's a shame. I was really wanting a gunfight. You know what? Watch well, this. We could disable the missiles, That's right? It. I'm all over it. I am all over <laughs> it. First thing I'll do is just put them into gunfight range and let them slog it out. Oh yeah, someone's asking too if we could get get a glimpse of the uh, five inch shell because that thing should be big. That's what we're doing. I think it's got six inch on the the other guy. No, I think that's a three inch gun. It's like based off of a uh, French system. Okay, valued viewers, we all feel cheated, let's face it, so watch this. We're in slogging range. Look at that gun. Oosh, 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 oosh. See what the rate of fire's like. Setting the camera up for optimal viewance. They take time to prep because they started them probably. Oh, look at that, look at, look at the Chinese ones banking towards it, even though I didn't ask it to. It's doing its evasive maneuvers again, it's probably going to blow itself up. Let's fire this guy out there because it has to, but that will turn around and come in. Hopefully the failings will deal with it. Oh, well, the bullets are going out. Oh, no sound. Another bug. How embarrassing. Yeah, those things got some impressive uh, sound if you ever hear it. It's like it's got a really big roar to it. Oh, we're getting shot. We're getting shot. Oh, the gun's out of action. Oh, no, it's not. Whoa. This is a fight. I'll oh, see. This is a fight. Boom! We just took a YJ down. Another one's coming. Oh, boom! The goddamn Mark 45 took it down. This has got to be one of our best fights yet. Oh, oh, she's wrecked. She's banging. Whoa, go missile. Boom! In the face! In the face! I'd say ideally, like, the early bird could be able to engage at, engage at a larger range due to the uh, canopy. Be farther but Jeez. I don't know how much difference it would make absolutely pounding each other these guys are ah stop it 
It looks like the Harley Burke won. Oh no! A rogue harpoon! A rogue Chinese harpoon just slammed into his guts! What a fight! Oh no! No! Oh, no. Who would have seen it coming, guys? Who would have seen it coming? I think the Chinese guys actually somehow got through that, which is embarrassing and a little annoying. She's still sailing, but... Let's have a look. Oh, the Chinese won! The Chinese won! And that was those harpoons that did it. I know I keep saying I'm harpoon, but you know what I mean. It's the YJs that won. So taking the harpoons off just meant that we just couldn't overwhelm it, right? And uh, it could overwhelm or... us. It overwhelmed us. That oh. and it's... Uh... And the zigzag pattern, and that zigzag yeah. pattern probably helped because those bullets take a long time to go, even ten miles like this. So that zigzag pattern probably helped it evade fire because look, it was only half damaged. Yeah. That's even something you would do even in World War Two would be the snake around a bit to try mm -hmm. to throw off some of the aim. Well, valued viewers, uh, that's something we didn't expect. But we, uh, once we'd stopped this guy destroying himself with his weird al algorithm, we um, we got a decisive victory. Very sad for all involved. Right, one more thing to do, and that's to fly an aeroplane into it. Stand by. RCS, or like where you've got most of your anti-air weapons are. That's the reason why you might notice how there's more anti-air stuff towards the rear of the ship than the front. Our job. Okay. Right, we're now charged. We're 60 nautical miles away, because I don't think it's going to have the extended range of missiles. We're going to fly towards it, and it will take a few minutes before it can fire missiles, I imagine, anyway, because it has to get warmed up. But we're 60 miles away. Let's see when it starts the lockers and stuff. Right, where's my RWR on this thing? I can't remember. Oh yeah, also it's about like a uh, side that's probably got like least important stuff. <laughs> Roger, all we can see is it's an AE, so it's an Aegis uh, style radar system. Yeah, it's probably just seeing the spy on it's like, okay, that's Aegis. I'm probably still over the horizon at this distance. Let me get up real high. I'm a Russian bomber coming in, or a Chinese bomber, whoever the bad guy is nowadays, I can never remember. Man, this plane's good. Right, I'm gonna charge towards him. Mr. Aegis, I've had to get some. Thirty-five thousand feet. You should be able to see me from here, I reckon. I wonder how far out she is. Spike. It's fine. He's woken up. He's seen me. Missile out. So the Fox one out at, and I quote, "Wow, forty-six miles." So that thing's pretty good, should we say? Let me see the missile come out. Bam! SM2. Up it goes. Right. How the hell am I going to dodge these ass? Uh, right, I've got to locate it and I've got to try and dodge it now. So, where is it? Somewhere off the right. It's so far away, I can't even see it. Oh, there it is. So, I've got some time. Let's go and see if we can play with it. Follow me, missile. Beat it kinetically. They're a really smart missile if it could shoot me down from here. Or really maneuverable. Oh, Jesus, get me this low look. No, I got it. Right, heading back in. Let's get some, baby! Oh, I've got no fuel, how annoying. Never mind. It's a one way mission, it looks like. Right, follow you know, me again. Well, you know, I was looking it up as to, like, remember how you were, we were doing, like, the Ticonderoga and we were asking about surely you can't have that issue of being able to pick something up that low? Yes. Apparently, it's like it's a setting that you can do. Roger. With it, where it's like if it if you start hitting that low, it'll start picking up uh, 
waves as targets, so it's like it's one of those things that it'll aim it slightly above the water. Yeah. But you can like fiddle with the settings for that. Okay. In I go. It somehow lost track of me. I fooled its ages somehow. And it has lost track of me. Let's see if it's got any fire control radars pointing at me. No, it's not. I think it's actually forgotten about me. Oh, 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 what's going wrong with it? This cat found a way to beat Aegis. I think I might have. Scratch that. Spike. Missile out. That was odd. It was playing dumb. Multiple missiles out. I have to do something special. But it is at low tracking. Yes. Coming, Aegis, I'm coming. Oh, it's locking me. Locking me even down here. And I've lost tally of him. Never a good thing to do for an Aegis ship. There it is. There it is. So I wonder if it's going to start hitting me with sea sparrows at some point. I wonder if they've said that they had the SSMs modeled, but I haven't seen it yet in game. Agreed. Or that they were going to have it, they might not have implemented it yet. Oh yeah, um, no, I've forgotten. Oh, stop it. This guy's well hard to beat. I don't think I'm going to be able to... Oh, maybe. Oh, the see the missile warheads are exploding now. Ooh, it's really hard to beat this guy. I don't think I can get much closer. Like comparing it to the other ships you've dealt with, just how far out you're having to deal yeah. with this. And how low I'm having to get, even this far out. Oh, stop it! Oh, in the face! Finally got me. So me flying pretty much as best as I could. Uh, 15 miles. So I just can't get anywhere near it. Right, even doing proper notching. So, let's, uh, anyway, let's go and... See if we can get him to fire his guns at me or anything. Or run out of gas. Where is he? SM2. Interesting. Annoyingly, his fire control radars don't seem to pivot. It's a bit disappointing. Speed that up a little. SM2's all the way by the looks of it. Oh, it's a cannon fire. We're in minimum range of the SM2 now. Whoop. Both phalanx is fire. Oh, I'm dead. God, that's hard. Let's see if we can shoot. Let's see if it has a vulnerable zone above it, like a lot of them do. Yes, it does. Vulnerable. Oh, no, it's not. Maybe not. Not sure. Ouch. Ouch. Look at that. That's impossible to dodge. Yeah, that, that thing is wicked. Nothing I could do to outmaneuver that, those guns. Boom! How embarrassing for me. Right. Uh, deciding to land into the uh, hangar. Yep. <laughs> Literally. Right. That's a thorough test of the uh, of the the Arlie Burke to a hole number one one two. Who is the yeah, Michael Murphy? Uh, thank you very much, D. Another bit of crash DCS. Anything you want to add to that? Um, I can't think of anything. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later.